All right, this was the winner. And I just can't wait to get started. <clears throat> the origin of the Quran. And they get a contact number. You can call that Why Islam? In fact, just call them and just ask that question. <laughs> Why Islam? All right. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. The gods, I guess, being the only one, I guess he would be the most of those things. Or you could drown the whole planet, do all those other horrible shit. You know, invent hell and all that. Still be the most merciful god if you're the only one. Ain't saying much. All right. This is the book in which there is no doubt in its guidance for those who fear God. I only fear things I believe in that are worthy of fear. <sighs> Maybe a kind of a respect. I'm like, you know, you, you won't see me like those swimming with crocodiles hang out. Things like that. I believe in those things. And they're dangerous. And besides God being the most merciful, no reason to fear him. He's the most merciful of everything, maybe. Who believe in the unseen, establish the prayer, and spread out of what we have given them. And who believe in that which was sent down to you, Muhammad, and that which was sent down before you, the books and the prophets? the big book, and have certain faith in the hereafter. I don't even know what we're hereafter, <laughs> especially a hereafter. <sighs> they are on true guidance from their Lord, and it is these who will prosper according to Surah number two, verses two through five. The Quran is the holy book which Muslims recite and turn to for guidance in all aspects of their life. I bet if any of need to rebuild the carburetor, they don't go there. <laughs> they go to a different book. Just silly, silly, silly. <sighs> all aspects of their life. Maybe not all of them. A lot of them. How's that? Quite a, quite a bunch. All right. It is the last testament in a series of divine revelations from God. It comprises the unaltered and direct words of God. Revealed through the angel Gabriel to the final prophet, Muhammad. Uh, and then they got Brethren's PBUH. Please be upon him. PBUH. Very handy to learn those acronyms. Just just say it out loud at any time. P B U H. Right. W two F. W T F. Some fourteen hundred years ago, when they spoke to uh, Mo P B U H. Islam is a continuation of the teachings of previous prophets, <sighs> such as Noah, Abraham, David, Moses, and Jesus. Peace be upon them all. Damn it. <laughs> uh. 
Some of whom were also given divine books. <sighs> Muslims believe that the key message brought by all prophets was the same, to believe in one God and not to associate partners with him, to stay away from sins and to lead a life devoted to earning God's pleasure. We're getting God off, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all prophets taught about life after death and gave glad tidings of paradise for those who obey God, but warning of punishment in hell for those who choose to disobey him. All right, I disagree with that one. Try as you might, you won't find Moses mentioning hell. He's got a lot of punishments there. Let's not mention hell. Uh, Abe never mentioned hell. Neither did Noah. If David, King David was a prophet, he could have avoided half of his mistakes by using prophecy. He'd go, oh man, <laughs> let's not take a walk on the roof tonight. Might be some lovely married woman bathing. I better not work. Might get in trouble. Might get such bad trouble that the unborn child would be killed by God. Just a good evening. The most merciful. Yeah, well, you know, all these prophets probably wouldn't have got much traction without offering that carrot. But I just don't think the, the same stick was there. I said, hell came around with, when we first meet Jesus. That's when we finally start hearing about hell. And as far as I noticed, talking Bible, of course. The Kran came much later and just sort of threw it all in. Yeah. Uh, the Quran is unique because it is the only revealed book that exists today in the precise form and context in which it was originally revealed. Furthermore, it was actively recorded during the time their religion was being established. Well, that is kind of impressive, I guess. Although you could say the same with the DNC, the Doctrine and Covenants. But, wasn't first, that is for sure. Ah, nor the last, unfortunately. Ah. The distinctive approach of the Quran is that its spiritual message includes practical injunctions aimed at the general welfare of human beings, society, and the environment in which we live. The Quran's message is eternal and universal, transcending all differences in race, color, ethnicity, and nationality. Yeah, well, the Mormons got you beat, man. They're actually like baptizing dead people symbolically to add to their numbers. They're passing you up, man. And they haven't even been around that long. They didn't think about baptizing dead people. Just think where the, the Islam faith would be. And it'd be like definitely number one. But the Muslims didn't think of it. The Mormons did. But anyway, yeah, but it's, it's growing. I mean, you know, belonging to community is appealing. If you're safer, the more support numbers you have. It's all, yeah, it's good to belong to things, I guess. If that's what you're into. Never been a joiner or a belonger. Just don't like the idea of being owned. Mm. Uh, it provides guidance 
on every aspect of human life from economics and the ethics of trade to marriage, divorce, gender issues, inheritance, and parenting. Wow, it sounds so far seen. How you read it? It neither condemns nor tortures the flesh, nor does it neglect the soul. It does not humanize God, nor does it deify man. The Quran describes signs of God's existence in the universe and how everything is carefully planned in the total scheme of creation. He's being the designer, right? Everything made so much sense. This is the beauty of the Quran. It asks you to reflect and reason. When you read the Quran further, it talks about prayer, kindness and charity. I was not a Muslim yet, but I felt the only answer for me was the Quran. And God had sent it to me. Cat Stevens. Now that's tragic. And I know that story. He almost cut, get, went so many oceans, got caught in a riptide. Almost drowned. Started praying. And somehow he, the right circumstances, he got to shore. <laughs> Didn't he, somebody gave him the Quran. I think it was his brother. And he's been a Muslim ever since, and the music pretty much. I don't know anything about it anymore. But I like a lot of his old stuff. So, nice bringing up a uh, new Islam. Former, former British pop star. Former anything except an, just another, just another uh, one in the tribe. <sighs> Yeah, that was a shame, but I don't know. Maybe he was, maybe he was played out already. I could say. This brochure examines two common questions asked by those seeking to understand the origin and authorship of the Quran. One. What evidence supports the Quran's claim of authenticity, i.e., that it has not been interfered with? That, that would be good. Hmm. Hmm. Two, even if the Quran has been preserved, what evidence supports that it is the word of God and not simply Muhammad, uh, P-B-U-H, his own writing? Well, I mean, supposedly he was illiterate, so, I mean, someone else actually had to do the writing anyway. But, um, all right, that's the first section of this. There, off to the rolling start. Uh, so I'm going to just stop right here and ask, uh, have you learned anything? Has this changed your life? And maybe you can share what I missed. Stay tuned. More to come.